Hello everyone, welcome to Vinam Guidance. This is Dr. Anuja Sharma and in this video we are going to discuss microbial metabolism. So let's get started. Now when we talk about microbial metabolism, we are talking about how the microorganisms are going to obtain or acquire their energy or how they are going to acquire the nutrients like carbon sources which are required for their growth and reproduction which are required, which are the basic necessity for them to live. So how they are obtaining these uh, energy, how they are obtaining carbon sources or how they are obtaining electrons and hydrogen atoms which are required for uh, different metabolic pathways, different uh, biochemical uh, pathways and which are required to conserve or, um, or utilize this energy. So how they obtain these electrons and hydrogen atoms and how they obtain their carbon sources, whether they are able to fix carbon dioxide into more complex carbohydrates or they require these carbohydrates, these organic carbon sources or inorganic carbon sources directly or whether they are able to use light as the energy source or they require chemical compounds for the energy. How they are obtaining these all sources, this energy, these carbon sources and these electrons or hydrogen atoms that combines the microbial metabolism. Also, what kind of energy or what kind of carbon sources uh, a microorganism, a particular microorganism is uh, obtaining and is utilizing, this will also determine uh, what kind of environment they are going to live in, what is their ecolog ecological niche, uh, how they are going to be useful in industry, what are their industrial applications or how they are uh, significant in biogeochemical bio cycles, that is all determined by how they are obtaining or how they are utilizing their energy and their carbon sources. So different microorganisms and their uh, species, they can be differentiated from each other and they can be classified based on what kind of energy they are using, what kind of carbon sources or how they are obtaining their carbon sources and how they are obtaining electrons required for different biochemical pathways. So the classification is based on three main principles. The first one is how they are obtaining their energy and the second one is how they are obtaining electrons and hydrogen atoms for the conservation of this energy and for different biochemical, different metabolic pathways. And the third one is how they are obtaining their carbon source for their uh, reproduction, for their growth, for the biomass. Now let's look at the classes based on how the energy sources are obtained in a microorganism. Now the first is phototrophic. Now photo, a microorganism can be phototrophic or, or it can also be called phototrophs when they obtain their energy from light and the other class is chemotrophic now a microorganism is chemotrophic when they obtain their energy from chemical compounds which can be either organic or inorganic compounds so these are the two classes based on how they are obtaining their energy now the next is how they obtain reducing equivalence like electron and hydrogen now depending on how they are obtaining or how they are getting their electrons and uh, hydrogen atoms which are required for different metabolic pathways and uh, for the conservation of energy microorganisms can be of two types they can be lithotrophic or lithotrophs and they can be organotrophic or organotrophs now when they are obtaining their uh, electrons or hydrogen atoms from inorganic compounds then they are known as lithotrophic or lithotrophs and when they are obtaining their electrons and hydrogen atoms from organic compounds then they are known as organotrophic so this is actually from the name itself so you can easily get from the title organotrophic means organic compounds so they are getting their electrons and hydrogen atoms from organic compounds from this also this is also easy photo is from photon so they are getting their energy from light chemo chemical they are getting their energy from chemical compounds now let's move on to the carbon sources now, uh, different microorganisms, uh, some microorganisms are capable of fixing carbon dioxide into more complex carbohydrates and more complex carbon sources, while other requires organic compounds or complex carbon sources directly um, for their growth and for their metabolism. So, the, based on how they are obtaining their, how they are utilizing their carbon, carbon sources, uh, the microorganisms can be autotrophic or autotrophs. Now, if a microorganism is able to fix carbon dioxide, they are known as autotrophic. Now, heterotrophic is another class based on uh, how they are using their, how they are obtaining their carbon sources. And it is when they are obtaining the carbon from organic compounds, when they require uh, carbohydrates like uh, glucose or sucrose or maltose, then they are heterotrophic in nature or they are also known as heterotrophs. 
Now, some micro microorganisms, they are capable of both fixing carbon, carbon dioxide and they are also capable of using these organic compounds for the growth and um, for the general uh, biomass. And these kind of microorganisms are known as mixotrophic because they are able to do both. They can fix carbon dioxide and they can also utilize organic compounds directly. Now, these terms, they can be combined based on the preferences of a microorganism. So, a particular microorganism can be photolitho heterotrophic or photolitho autotrophic or it can be chemo litho heterotrophic or chemo litho autotrophic or chemo organo heterotrophic. So, these terms can be combined based on the preferences of a particular microorganism. Now, let's look at some of these terms and some examples from each classification. So, the first one is chemo litho autotrophs. Now, always remember the sequence when you are combining these terms. So, first comes the energy, then comes the source of electron or hydrogen atom, which means the source of reducing equivalent, and, the, and finally comes the carbon source. So, that's the sequence of each term. So, the first one is chemo litho autotroph. Now, chemo means they're obtaining their energy from chemical compounds. Litho means that obtaining the reducing equivalents like electron and hy or hydrogen atoms from inorganic compounds and auto means they are able to fix carbon dioxide to uh, utilize it as a carbon source. So the first example is sulfur oxidizing bacteria which use sulfur, iron oxidizing bacteria, nitrifying bacteria. So these are the examples of organisms or the bacteria which are which use chemical compounds as their energy source and inorganic compounds as their source of electron or hydrogen atom and all these bacteria are able to fix carbon dioxide. Now the next term is photolitho autotrophs and light as energy source, inorganic compounds as source of electron or hydrogen atom and they are able to fix carbon dioxide. So the first example is cyanobacteria. Now cyanobacteria utilizes water as the hydrogen donor so inorganic compounds from which they are getting their uh, electron or hydrogen atom in this case hydrogen atom is water they are able to utilize light as the energy source and they are able to fix carbon dioxide another example is chloroflexes which uses hydrogen as the inorganic compound for their reducing equivalents some of the microorganisms are also able to utilize hydrogen sulfide for their hydrogen atoms for their reducing equivalents. Now the next category or next term is chemolitho heterotrophs which means they use uh, chemical compounds as their energy source. Now they use inorganic compounds as they use inorganic compounds for their uh, reducing equivalents as in electron and uh, or hydrogen atoms and they are heterotrophs which means they are not able to fix carbon dioxide. They can only use organic compounds as their carbon source. An example is thiobacillus which requires hydrogen for their reducing equivalent. Now the next is chemo organo heterotrophs. Now they use chemical compounds as their own energy source and in chemical compounds they can only use organic compounds for their electron or for their hydrogen atoms and their heterotrophs or heterotrophic which means they are not able to fix carbon dioxide they can only use organic compounds for their carbon source. Now most of the bacteria most of the bacteria they are chemo organo heterotrophs. So you can easily remember this. Most of the bacteria are chemo organo heterotrophs like E. coli, bacillus, or any other bacteria. Most of them are chemo organo heterotrophs. Now, the last term, last category is photo organo heterotrophs. So these require light as their energy source, and they can only utilize organic compounds for their reducing equivalents like electron or hydrogen atom and they are also not able to fix carbon dioxide so they are going to require organic compounds. Now one example is rhodobacter and another one is heliobacterium. Another example is chloroflexus is also photo organo heterotrophic and photo organo autotrophic. So it can, it can fix carbon dioxide as well as it can utilize organic compounds as a carbon source. So it is a mixotrophic microorganism or it is a mixotroph. Now all these heterotrophic uh, bacteria, they are very abundant in nature. So most of the parasites and parasitic bacteria and most of the pathogenic bacteria, they are heterotrophic in nature. 
so these are evidently found in nature and they are very significant in utilizing polymers so they are very significant in uh, degradation of compounds like lignin cellulose chitin and they are also very significant in biogeochemical cycles and they are also very um, they are very industrially applicable because they can be utilized in biodegradation and they can be used in bioremediation and they can be used in wastewater management so these heterotrophic bacteria they are very industrially significant and they are very abundant in nature now most of the prokaryotes they use the most uh, basic type of metabolic pathways for their for obtaining their energy and to utilize their uh, carbon sources to utilize their sugar so they basically utilize glycolysis for sugar metabolism and they use citric acid cycle to degrade acetate or to obtain their energy sources to obtain their atp so these are the most common which is used by all the prokaryotes however there are certain exceptions so there are certain other metabolic pathways which can also be used by certain prokaryotes and these are pentose phosphate pathway now this is also utilized this is also used by some microorganism to obtain their energy so this this is an alternate pathway that can be used by some of the prokaryotes